Thank you for joining this course and taking out your time. Today, we're going to talk about something that each one of us has gone through. We have often successfully dealt with it, and sometimes we have caved in to the pressures. We are going to today talk about stress management. I have prepared some slides which we can have parallel to while we speak. Stress management is a topic which most of you have heard about, a lot of times gone over, and probably a lot of things that I'm going to talk today are repetitions of things that you have heard or read elsewhere. But it is important nonetheless. It's important to sometimes refresh our memory, sometimes to relearn things that we have learned before. This lecture has been divided in four components. I'm first going to talk about what is it that we are managing. So understanding stress. The second component is understanding the impact of stress. How does it really get into our systems? How do we start noticing that this is stress creating a havoc inside of us? The third part of the lecture deals with beginning to start understanding the dealing of sex, stress. Here we are going to start talking about a very important, pertinent topic called resilience. Resilience is something that helps us deal with things that life throws at us. And the fourth and the last part will be the various strategies that we actually employ in dealing with stress. So the first part begins. We are going to start understanding what is stress, what is the definition of stress, and how can we start understanding what we want to manage. Here, understanding what we intend to manage. So now stress essentially is something where the demands start rising much above our resources. What and how do we understand this balance and the tipping off of this balance? Now, stress, as we all know, is something that is almost required for us to function successfully. Now, this functioning is dependent on the balance that we are maintaining and creating for the successful operation of our day-to-day -day lives. So we have certain demands. The demands can be environmental, the demands can be physical. They can possibly come from biological needs. And we are addressing these demands with certain resources that we have. So if I'm hungry, I have food to eat and I eat that. If I'm feeling cold, I wear a sweater and my body is able to respond and recover. When the demand supersedes the resources, that is where the problem begins. That is where the balance starts becoming tipped over, right? Now, stress can be experienced in two important ways, depending on how you are cognizing and experiencing it. The perception of stress will come in two essential ways. One is the psychological pressure that you feel. So you feel stress. You feel that you are not being able to respond, operate, manage what life circumstances others are doling out on you. The other bit on how stress actually make it, makes itself apparent is through physical symptoms. Sometimes we say, well, I'm not stressed. Nothing is happening. It's all okay. Everything is under control. But I actually start complaining of severe headache, a bad backache, or sometimes I actually start getting frequent fever, right? All of this actually is our body's way of telling us that we are getting stressed. And sometimes we do not have enough insight to know that these physical anomalies are being caused by our inability or a demand on our resources, which is too much for us to take. This is what is understood as stress. Now, why do we need to manage it? Why do we need to start getting better at actually both understanding and responding to stress? Stress is something that will happen. Stress is something that you can't really run away from. Now, let's go to a little bit of history. So, Hans Selye was known as the founder of stress theory. Now, he's not a psychologist. He, in fact, is a endocrinologist who was doing research on organisms way of responding to 
pressures from the environment and from within the organism. Now, the first definition that he did come about was non-specific response of the body to any demand. Now, this non-specific response means that there has been placed a demand which the body does not accurately know how to respond to. So it responds in various different ways. So as we understand from this definition and from an endocrinologist, stress is something that is required for our body to kick into action, to actually start functioning, right? So there is some amount of stress that we always need to actually respond to the demands that are essential for our survival. So we have to feel hungry, for example, to eat food. We have to feel sleepy to go off to sleep. Selly also responded by giving a general adaptation syndrome. Okay, this syndrome is known as the basic way in which organisms respond to stress. Now this is divided in three important parts. The first phase is what is known as the alarm reaction. Here the body feels the stress, actually gets prepared. And here it starts cognizing that there is something happening to which I need to start to respond. The second stage is resistance, where I want to push it out. And the third stage, where I have responded and reacted to it, and now I feel that my resources are depleting, is the stage of exhaustion. So alarm, resistance, and exhaustion make up the general adaptation syndrome. Now, if you see the diagrammatic representation given on the slide, you will see a relationship between performance and stress. Now, here what I want to essentially point out is that some amount of stress is actually healthy. It is actually a good tension that we need to start performing. So if there is no tension, we will not study. If there is no tension, we will not actually prepare to do our tasks properly. So some amount of stress, some amount of tension is good, required. And when this keeps increasing, we come to an optimal level, the comfort zone. Here, the balance between the stress and the performance is optimal. We are able to do our best. We are able to respond with everything that we have and create the best balance. Now, beyond this point, if the stress keeps increasing, our resources actually take a beating and we start feeling fatigue. This is the point where we have reached the highest level, the best that we can do, the best that we can stretch ourselves to. And after that, if stress continues, performance declines. And this part is known as distress. This is where we start needing help. This is where we start needing to manage our stress. Here, the distress part is what is unhealthy, leads to exhaustion and a breakdown or a burning out. This is when we need to start either upping our resources or managing the amount of stress that is coming in and being perceived by us. Okay, I will actually go into a little bit of detail of eustress, which is the good stress, and distress, which is the bad stress. Lazarus had actually worked extensively on these theories. Eustress. Eustress is within our ability to cope, stress that actually motivates us, channelizes us in the right direction. It helps us focus and improve performance. This is good stress. We need it. Distress or the stress that actually exhausts us. The stress that's, that actually starts having a negative residual impact on us and our systems. It is much beyond our adaptive and coping. It can actually be both acute and chronic. We actually have a negative aversive reaction to it. And this sort of stress causes anxiety. Interestingly, what is the important thing to know here 
is that in fact all life events cause some amount of stress. Things that we've been looking forward to also cause stress. Marriages, shifting to a new home, a new job, a change of scenario, a coming in of a new family member, all of these are stressful life events just as much as getting an illness, having a death in the family, losing something that is important to you, all of these are stressful life events, right? I'm going to leave you with an interesting life stress inventory prepared by Holmes and Rahe, where you can actually start giving and calculating your uh, quotient, your number that will determine how stressed you are. I'm going to leave you with that. And you are and can take some time to go over this stress inventory and see where your stress level lies right now. So do the Holmes and Rahe inventory, calculate your stress levels. With the inventory, I'm also sharing how you can rudimentarily interpret what your scores roughly mean. So once you know this, you will also know what your current stress levels are. And then you can feel better prepared to start managing them. So this is uh, end of part one.